Hey folks, in this episode, I'm sitting down with my good friend, Photo Joseph. We're gonna be talking about Panasonic's new box camera. This is Twitter. Hey, welcome back to another episode of This Week in Photo. I'm your host, Frederick Van Johnson. Today on the show, the distinct pleasure and honor I have of sitting down with my buddy, Mr. Photo Joseph of a YouTube channel by the same name. Uh, we're going <laughs> to be, ta- <laughs> be talking about Panasonic's new box camera. It's an interesting new uh, enclosure. It's micro four thirds for a camera. It's targeted at people, I would say, like Photo Joseph that are that are sort of playing in that that filmmaking, cinematography, high end world and less of the world of people like me that use cam links and that sort of thing so just (laughs) (laughs) welcome man how's it going Uh, it's going real good thank you for asking i I think by the time we're at the end of this conversation you might change your tune and might need like five of these in your studio we'll see oh no so five of those (laughs) i'm gonna need five of the new uh what is it the the airpod the home pods the little 99 dollar ones yeah a little home pod mini or whatever it's called yeah that looks pretty nice Oh, yeah, so much stuff. So many toys, so little money. <laughs> what it comes down to. So, you know, let, you know you're, you're, you've got a highly popular YouTube channel. You're known in the industry. You and I worked together way back in the day at Apple for a little bit. Um, you know your way around media and video creation. You got black magic. You had black magic gear before it was attainable for the rest of us with the, with A10 Mini Pro and all that stuff. So perfect right. person to ask these questions to. So, um, you know, before we kick off, just what's your elevator pitch for the people that may not be familiar with you or your YouTube channel? Yeah, sure. So I'm Photo Joseph, content creator, YouTuber, photographer, filmmaker, all that good stuff. Uh, these days, hang my hat as Photo Joseph pretty much everywhere. You find it on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and so on. I'm most active on Twitter. If you want to interact on social media, that's definitely the place to go. And to subscribe at YouTube, youtube.com slash Photo Joseph, of course. Most of my video content there is, well, everything is about photography and video. It's kind of a photo, video, gear, and technique. That's the, the elevator pitch on that. And uh, yeah, we talk about all kinds of fun stuff. And lately it's been a lot on the live streaming world, especially since COVID, everybody's a live streamer now. And the introduction of the ATEM Mini late last year could not have come at a better time for Black Magic. And they've just keep hitting it out of the park with every new release. So we've really been talking a lot about that. Um, yeah. And then with this new camera that we're going to be talking about today, it's really interesting to see how that can tie into a setup like that, using the black magic for streaming and simultaneous recording. And that's, to me, where this camera is the most exciting. So uh, we'll, we'll definitely be talking about that. Yeah, let's dive into that. And you hit it right on the head, man, the, like with the with the pandemic and then the increased rush into Zoom based workflows and school and all that and live streaming becoming more and more popular. People like you, like yourself, uh, now have superpowers, right? Because you're you've been doing this stuff for years and figuring it out and failing and then succeeding and then buying gear. So you've already walked over all the coals, all the coals yeah. to sort of get to the the professional video place. Is this you know we're going to talk about that camera? But I'm curious is is the sort of new world that we're living in this live streaming Zoom world that we're living in? Does that does that change the trajectory of where your business? is going or is it just you know you have more clients and you're doing more of the same no well it has i mean because i've been doing live streaming for quite a while and i've got setups like you know this here this is just my my studio i'm at my desk right now but you know i built out this cool backdrop and obviously it's nicely lit and so on and then the camera switching and everything i had all that in place long before covid and so people have always seen that and come to appreciate how it looks and the results of it. And then once this started and everybody suddenly went, oh my God, I have to stream from home all the time, whether it's just for Zoom meetings or for doing actual broadcasts, I started actually getting a lot of new clients just for consulting, just you know, an hour here and there, just helping people through this process, what it takes to set it up, what it takes to make it look good, sound good, um, be successful and so on. So it's it's been huge. I and mean, that's been a really big part of my business uh, over the last nine months, which has been pretty wild to to see happen. But it's cool. You know, and some of the clients that are looking for bigger things or different things than what I normally do, it just gives me an excuse to dive into it and learn more about it and figure out how it integrates with what I already know. Yeah. And I would imagine that it's going to it's it's going to keep going in that trajectory because now that the blood's in the water and people understand that, yeah, this, this live streaming yeah. stuff isn't that big a deal. It's not hard. To, it's hard to do, but it's not, you know, it's it's kind of 
like the real estate agent has to have a nice car, right? So if you're gonna show up on if you're gonna show up on camera, you need to look good and not look like everyone else with just a basic you know on camera right. uh, webcam. So yeah, yeah. So that leads me into yeah. the conversation. Uh, you know, the topic yeah. is your Panasonic. Like I said in the intro, there announced this new box camera, which is a it's a box, right? It's a box with the corner <laughs> shaved off of it. It's got a micro four thirds lens on it, and a bunch of other doohickeys on it. So I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play the you know the the luddite guy in this conversation. You know, to okay. some degree, I love this stuff. But my, you know, you and I have had this conversation before. You are, you know, BBC, CNN, NBC, whoever over there <laughs> in your space, and I'm just the guy with a home office and some lights and a good camera. And I want I want it to look great. I would be your client if I didn't know what I know now. I would be your client. Right. Like I want yeah, my correct. stuff to look good, but I don't want rack mounted stuff in my home or anything like that. Who is this camera? Do you think, in your opinion, I know you, neither the, the the disclaimer is neither neither one of us has had the camera in hand. We're looking at this. Unfortunately, no, not yet. Yeah, we're making inferences. So hey, Panasonic, send Joseph one of these cameras. He needs. <laughs> so, so I mean, who's well, I'm still it? Who's an ambassador. It? I, I you know I don't I'm not sure why I haven't got my hands on one yet, but. Um, yeah, that's I, why I you limited. know what it's funny that's why i reached out to you i just assumed yeah. that you would have had one like six months ago you know and you were like oh yeah i've been using that forever it's great you know well i definitely was talking about it six months ago but um no i know i just i oh well, who knows you know there's very limited availability right now i'm sure they're not shipping yet so right yeah, yeah still it's still not shipping yet so i'm sure that has a lot to do with it um sometimes yeah. i get hardware early sometimes i don't but um Anyway, but yeah, let's talk about what this thing is and who it's for. And yeah, who and, do you think it's uh, for? Is it is it for the filmmaker or can the regular Joe like me get it? Well, that, that's the crazy thing is it's so it's so versatile. It's a pretty unique type of camera, right? There's not that many manufacturers making box cameras like this. And the term box camera for anyone who's like, what are you talking about? The idea is, well, first of all, it literally looks like a box, like a small cube in your hand, but it has no viewfinder has no LCD, it has no grip, it has none of the stuff that you would normally associate with a camera. It is basically the sensor and enough space around the sensor to hold the lens mount, the electronics that are required to run it, memory card, and then a place to attach a battery. Right? That's that's kind of, it's not, even, it's not an internal battery, right? It's just attaches to the outside of it. So yeah. it's it's as small as it can possibly be with still having what is required, obviously things like the lens mount, and you can't make it physically smaller than the lens mount for obvious reasons or smaller than the sensor. But beyond that, it's there's just not that much to it. And the idea is that you can add to it what you need. And there are plenty of situations where, yeah, if you need a kind of traditional camera rig, you could put this into a cage so you have a handle. You could mount a monitor on it so you can see what's happening. You could mount a, a battery pack or a big external power source. You could mount a follow focus rig. You know, you can mount all of that stuff to it, but there's a lot of situations where you only need some of that or don't need any of it, in which case you now have something that's a lot smaller and lighter. So on the case, on the situation where you don't need much of anything would be uh, mounting it to a drone. Right. We think of drones as the like a Mavic or something where you've got the all in one. It's got the camera built in. But on the higher end, there's a lot of drone in the drone world where you add your own camera to it. And so, you know, there you can get a drone that will fly a red. Right. That is completely possible. So you have a bigger drone that you can mount a camera on. The lighter the camera is, the longer the drone can fly. And so if you've got a really uh, really good quality, small, lightweight camera that you can put on a drone. You can either put it on a smaller drone or a, or fly it for longer with a bigger drone. And that just gives you more options than you would have than if the camera weighed twice as much. So there's stuff like that that's very interesting where it's clearly not for everybody, but that is a definite use case. Um, anywhere you want to put the camera where it just like in a corner of a room where who cares if it hasn't have a viewfinder or an LCD, you wouldn't be able to see it anyway because it would be backed into the corner. So why have it? Now you have a tiny little camera that you can stick in the corner and then you can run your monitor off of it separately so you can see what's going on and configure it and so on. So there's lots of different uses. Um, top down camera, great use for that. You don't need you're not going to stand up, you know, looking through the camera. You'd much rather be down at your table looking at a monitor that that camera sees and being able to adjust things, you know, make your changes without having to climb up a ladder and look down on the camera. It's just tons and tons of uses for it. But 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 you okay? So devil's advocate, I'm looking at it now, and I'll I'll, I'll you know put some some B-roll of the the shots in for people to see. But I'm looking at it on B and H right now, and it's two thousand dollars for this body yeah. for Micro Four Thirds. So me, you know, again. 
just guy at home, I'm like, yeah, it'd be great to have some of these on my desk. Like I could do a down shot when I'm showing something. Like, you know, my, my black magic ATEM would love these. I'll just run a bunch in there. But then my right. brain goes to, why don't you just go buy some old G7s? They have a sure. micro four thirds sensor on it and a lens for a couple hundred dollars and plug that in. Is it really going to be that much different? So what do you say to that? I mean, what's, what's the use case or is no, it just not for me? It's well, again, it's, it, you know, price point depends on what you're, what you're used to, but yeah. you have to consider what the camera is. It is effectively a GH five S which is a $2,000 camera, right? Take away the display, the monitor, the viewfinder, um, the internal battery, the grip, and all those things you take away from it, add to it, ethernet control, SDI, um, uh, I remember off the top of my head, what dual, oh no, it has the dual native ISO, Ver, full Vericam log, full V-log, um, and a few other things to it, and the price kind of goes back up, and so it balances out. And so no, you don't need as just a cheap webcam over, over the head, over the top camera, you certainly don't need all of this. But if you're mm -hmm. doing something that's more broadcast level, then it starts to make a lot more sense to have that level of control. Uh, yeah. I'll give you an example of a, a job that uh, I might be getting. Well, I'm working with a client on a possible event, so I can't, I'm not going to go into details of what it is, but we'll see if they actually pull the budget together for this. But they want to do a, a live broadcast event that is going to be three locations, uh, one look at one venue, but three different locations, a stage, an MC and a live band, which would all be in separate places, um, all being broadcast live. And so that's because of COVID, everybody has to be quite far apart. So I have to have long cable runs to all the cameras. So that means SDI right there. It's, you know, immediately it's SDI for long cable runs. Mm -hmm. And I need to be able to control those cameras. So long ethernet back and I can control, I think it's up to eight of these cameras from a single computer. I can see what the camera sees, make controls to exposure, focus, um, and so on, all from a single workstation. So I'll be able to control a series of cameras that are scattered all over the venue from one location. And obviously if I needed more than eight, then I just have two computers and you know have multiple computers there. So that type of possibility is something that you just can't do with a conventional camera. Some suddenly something like this makes a lot more sense and that two thousand dollar price point is is nothing for that. It's yeah, um, yeah. It's it something goes into the budget, do. right? Yeah. 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 So stuff like that is is extremely interesting. Right. And so then you've got, okay, so I can control this camera. I get a HD signal over SDI that I can run back into my ATEM switcher and I'm doing the live switching event. Simultaneously, every camera can be recording 4K internally. It could be recording 4K log if I wanted to so that I get full quality for later re-editing, recolor grading, um, you know, re redo the entire show and post, but I still have the full live version that was an HD that was, that was broadcast live. Um, and again, having that complete control from a single, you know, be able to sit at a command center controlling cameras that are spread all over the venue is uh, is pretty crazy cool. Yeah. Okay. So, so devil's advocate. So you're, you mentioned the ATEM and I have an ATEM mini pro here that's yeah. running this camera right now, which is a GH4 micro four thirds. Um, why not get black magic gear and plug into your black magic switcher? Cause I know you can, you can control those cameras from the, from the ATEM as well. Would this yep. be an alternative to that? Or does it make sense to stay with the same brand? There there would be advantages and disadvantages to either one. Um, one of the, so this camera, the BGG, the BGH1, <laughs> yeah. the box camera, uh, <laughs> box, records that's internally. Box. <laughs> yeah. I know, right? Records internally. The Blackmagic camera, you're talking about the micro cinema, micro studio camera, it's called. Mm -hmm. So it's same idea. It's a box camera, same concept, no LCD, no viewfinder. Um, it does not have re internal recording. So, that means that you have to attach an external recorder to that, assuming that you want to do the recording for re-editing later, right? So you got to have an external recorder on that, uh, which you obviously you want to do 4K. So, you know, you're talking, what, $700 or so for a, an external 4K recorder that'll give you that pass-through so that you can get that data um, off to the switcher as well. So that's that part of it, the cost is no longer cheaper at all. It's a, in fact, it's probably even a little bit more by the time you have the recorder. So um, in that regard, having that internal 4K recording is great. Um, you, you do lose the ability to control the camera from the ATEM. So if you're using Blackmagic cameras, you have color correction control on the ATEMs. You can control the camera, but you are actually, you're looking at a 
considerably smaller sensor. So that's one of the other big disadvantages. You're looking at it's it's a cropped micro four thirds sensor. It's not uh, it's not even a full micro four thirds. And this one, I think because it's based off the GH5S, you're actually getting a little bit bigger than micro four thirds. I think I could be wrong about that, um, but it's at least micro four thirds, whereas the Blackmagic is a crop of that. So you are using a bigger sensor. Those those Blackmagic cameras, as much as I like them, they really not good in low light at all. Uh, mm. They have they have a one base ISO, which because it's all for broadcast, they don't list the ISO. It's just, it's gain. So you have zero decibels of gain. The camera looks great. I mean, looks good. Let's not say great. Let's say it looks good. <laughs> but if you go up plus six, plus 12, plus 18 dB of gain, it starts to fall apart really quickly. And it does not look good in low light. That I can, because I own a couple of these things and I know I have to really light my sets to, so I don't have to. Um, gain the camera up. So if you gain it up, it's just, it's not good, especially for 4K. Um, you can get away with it in HD a little bit because it's down sampling so much, but 4K, forget about it. You got to shoot in zero dB. So this camera is going to give you a lot more capability. The black, the Panasonic um, box camera give you a lot more capability for low light for sure. That's a huge yeah. difference right there. Yeah. And um, so you, you, know, know, you, win some, you gain, you gain and you lose some things. Um, there are certainly yeah. convenience advantages to working all with the black magic family, but you're, you are losing some things. So, you know, yeah, yeah, everything's a trade-off, right? I mean, we've been, we've been having this conversation since the beginning of time as we geek out right. over various things that show up in the market. It's like, oh, this is great, oh, except for this one thing. If they just put this one thing in there, it would have been perfect. It's always that. <laughs> it's always. Yeah. Um, so, you know, this is, the, the looking at this camera, it looks like it's ideal for, like you said, drones, but also for, you know, handheld gimbals like, like the one behind me over there, right? So right. throwing it on things like that, except... Uh, that one, at least the, the, what is that? The DJI, whatever the middle model is, that thing, um, can't support that much weight. And with this thing, it looks like, like you said, I'm going to have to attach an external monitor to it and all that stuff. So is it ideal for gimbal use? Well, no, absolutely. Part of the thing. Okay. So you think about a standard gimbal that has a weight limitation. You're, that is the weight limitation. What's going to be balanced and on the moving part of it. Mm -hmm. Right. If you're going to use this camera, this camera and the lens obviously gets mounted onto the moving part of it. The display, the monitor that you're going to attach doesn't have to be part of that moving part of it. In fact, it wouldn't be. You would attach that elsewhere on the handle mm -hmm. so that it is not part of that weight limitation for the, the moving head. Obviously, you still have to carry the weight, but it is not going to be part of the weight limitation of that moving head. Yeah, yeah. See, you're making me want this more and more. You're. Right. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, though, look, the modern gimbals, the DJI that you've got, and I, I don't even know the model numbers, the ones that just came out that are like, oh my God. You, you know, the um, Josh Yo channel, Create, just, yeah. is it Create Art Now or something like that? Uh -huh. yep. Have you seen the video that he did on this new gimbal with the new focusing system? I've been avoiding it because I don't want to watch it. <laughs> it's not that he seems to be the only guy on YouTube who's got this thing. Um, they've got this LIDAR system that's coming out and it's not out yet, but I guess it's just gonna be a couple of weeks. This LIDAR system that you can mount on the gimbal that feeds into a, a mechanical uh, rack focus system. So you can auto focus any mechanical lens with LIDAR and it looks exceptionally accurate. And this is the first generation of it. Oh. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that system, um, that that gimbal can hold quite a heavy camera. I mean, he's on his demos, he's got a, a bigger, I think a Sony on there or something with quite a big lens and it doesn't seem to be a problem. So, you know, when it comes to weight stuff for gimbals, yes, it's great to have the lighter weight camera, but I don't think it's all that necessary because gimbals do support quite heavy cameras these days. Uh, yeah. That said, though, that viewfinder on, a, you know, if you have a standard DSLR or DSLM on the gimbal, that viewfinder flips out. And that's part of, you know, that's part of what's moving. But when you're moving the gimbal like that, you're kind of you're moving to see it as opposed to if you can just mount the monitor onto the handle of the gimbal and not have to worry about it. Which not to say you can't do that with a conventional camera anyway, but now it's you know, two monitors that you're got the weight for that's in your hands. So, yeah. you know, there's, if you're holding, if you're carrying a gimbal all day, then certainly every gram matters because at some point you're just like, put this damn thing down, which just weighs too much. It. it doesn't matter if the gimbal can handle it or not. It's just your own physical ability to carry the thing around all day. So at that point, yeah, of course, the lighter the weight, 
you can possibly get it down to, then the better. So yeah, if you can get this in a lightweight lens and as lightweight monitors you can manage to find, then you know, cool. It's every ounce, every gram matters. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, one of the things that that Panasonic often comes under fire for with their cameras is autofocus. You know, and sure. and its accuracy versus the competitors out there. Uh, a slight tangent on that. In my community, we've been talking, or at least I've been talking about it, you know, in ranting about why don't these camera manufacturers start incorporating LiDAR into the camera bodies to have that level of, if Apple can do it with iPhone 12, how come, you know, these guys can do it that where imaging is the primary goal versus, you mm -hmm. know, <laughs> so anyway, that was that. But I'm curious as what you think about this box camera um, and and that world that it's targeted at, sort of the high end video professional, is is autofocus a requirement or accurate autofocus a requirement in that world or are video guys all manual all the time? I would say film guys are all manual all the time, but that you know film guy versus video guy is a pretty blurry line these days. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I look the tool every tool that you can have is to your advantage. The more tools you have, the more features you have, the more options you have. You don't have to use autofocus because you have it, but you can't use it if you don't have it. So obviously I would love to see, you know, Sony class autofocus on these cameras. You know, maybe it'll happen one day. I don't know. But you know, it's it's one of the limitations that you know it is what it is. It's a bit of a shame sometimes you wish they had it. But then again, you know, you look at the Sonys and the Canon cameras, and there's certainly features on these that those don't have. So there still is no perfect camera. But uh, yeah, you know, obviously, I'd love to have great autofocus. Personally, do I do I use it the way that I shoot for the most part? I'm either shooting in a locked shot, so something like this, where I don't even if the autofocus autofocus was amazing, I wouldn't use it because every once in a while, you know, you see this in YouTube videos all the time, the camera suddenly decides to focus on something back here and then come back again. And it's quick, but you're like, mm -hmm. was that really necessary? Why isn't the camera just in manual focus anyway, and just locked into, into place? Yeah. Uh, so that's the way that I tend to shoot on these kind of things is it's manual and it's locked. But, uh, oh, and then if I'm doing kind of more job cinema type stuff, I'm manual focusing because I want control. Right. I want to do a slow rack from A to B. I want to have control over that focus. I don't want to be leaving it up to the camera and hoping that it's doing what it's supposed to do. But again, if it had perfect face lock autofocus, I'm sure I'd use it because it would be you know pretty cool to use. Yeah, yeah. It seems like a holy war online about focus these days, especially from vloggers, you know, dumping on Panasonic because it doesn't do this, it doesn't yeah. do that, and then. Well, if you you're know, a vlogger. Yeah, I mean, if you're a vlogger, then certainly autofocus is is important. You know, you want to be able to hold that camera in front of you, pointing at yourself, flip it around and have it immediately grab focus on something else back to you, right on you. I totally get it. Uh, yeah. Clearly, that's great. And that's why Sony cameras are so popular with the vloggers, because they're so good at that. Um, you know, yeah, is it's what it tools, is. tools, right? It's tools. It's, it's cool. tools. Well, cool. Let, let's, let's wrap it up with just your thoughts on you know, in your workflow right now, I think we've talked, we talked about this a couple of years ago, like what would be the, the ideal camera? Like if, like what features, like say this box camera was the ideal camera or your S, you know, one or whatever were your ideal camera. What features are missing? Is it, is it like a LiDAR type technology? Is it an app store ecosystem? Like what, what do you feel is missing right now? Um, gosh, interesting question. I don't know. There's, a lot of times these new cameras come out and I'm like, oh, I didn't even know I needed that, but now I need that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Steve Jobs whispering in your ear. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, you know, the autofocus, sure. I would love to have world-class autofocus on these cameras. That would be that would be great. I wouldn't use it all the time, but it'd be great to have as an option. You know, you, you mentioned LiDAR and that it, LiDAR is really interesting. We'll see where that goes. It's It works for this SD, uh, for this, um, um, DJI gimbal thing because of the way it's integrated that works, but it's also very specific. It You have to be in the center of the frame for it to focus on that. It, it doesn't do like face detection and all that. Could a camera potentially have a widespread of LiDAR where that data map is fed into the camera and when you say face detection, it goes, okay, there's a face, map that over the LiDAR spread and I mean, could that work? I, I guess. Is that going to be any better than what you've got today with a camera like the Sony that has such good autofocus? I don't know. I don't know if that's any better. Uh, you know, the the thing that the DJI allows you to do is autofocus a manual focus camera uh, lens. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. is crazy. You take an old vintage lens or a cinema lens, and you be able to autofocus. That is pretty awesome. But um, I don't. I don't know that lidar is really the right thing to put into a camera for conventional use. I, I don't know. Yeah. You know. 
yeah, don't know yeah, enough about it. But uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's great here. for Tesla. It's great, it's great for self-driving cars. I don't know if it's how necessary it is widespread on a camera. Um, yeah, well, for iPhones, right? For augmented AR and that kind of thing. So yeah, I mean that that's a totally different thing. But I would I would love to see more of that that hyper intelligence, the artificial intelligence that you do get in an iPhone or any smartphone, you know, that mm -hmm. computational photography that's happening there is so mind bendingly good. Yeah, um, I agree. The, the low light, the night mode that you get on these cameras is just insane, right? That's incredible. Why we don't have all that capability put into every Canon and Sony and Panasonic and every other camera that's out there these days. I don't understand that at all yeah. because yeah. it's not like it's new. And if right. it fits into a thousand dollar iPhone, I think we, that we can fit this into a two thousand dollar camera. So I don't get why that's, why that's you and not I are there. brothers. Yeah, I could have said the same thing. It's the I say the exact same thing. You know, and the other yeah. side of that is proper size. Let's call it proper size sensor and superior right. optics on these larger cameras. So you're not trying to make it work with this little amount of light. You know, you can have right. all the light you can eat, you know, and then do great things with it. Why not? Why not put that? You know, the, the other side well, of that coin that I always iPhone talk about. Level, if you had iPhone level tech yeah. on a micro four thirds or a full frame sensor. Yeah. I, oh, and over. real glass. Come on, man. Yeah. That would be in an app store I, ecosystem. I, throw a cellular modem in there and have an app right. store ecosystem where I could download photo Joseph's, you know, uh, night photography technique or something, you know, and have you tell me how to do stuff and, and set my camera function. <laughs> it's like yeah. it's, it feels like that's the future. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But keep waiting you know, for we're, it. We're grumpy old men. You know, in my day, <laughs> we had <laughs> in my day, we had nothing. We had nothing. We had, we had nothing. We had, we had the we had the quick take in my day. Right? So, well, cool, man. In my well, day, uh, I was reloading film canisters in a black bag out in the middle of nowhere. I did that. I did that. Generic yeah, film sitting there cranking with a dark bag. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah. No, it sucked because we we did that and <laughs> processed it, so it was it was horrible. Um, all right. Well, well, take us home, man. If people if people want to connect with you and all the stuff that you do, photojoseph.com is uh, is your Rome, right? All roads lead there. Any yep. other places? Oh, yep. All, lo all roads lead to there. Yep. Yeah. Photo Joseph. Absolutely everywhere. The YouTube channel is certainly a, a great place to subscribe and head over to photojoseph.com where you'll see everything that goes on to the YouTube channel goes on to photojoseph.com as well as some other stuff goes on there as well. So like you said, that's kind of the, the greatest anchor point. But obviously everybody's on YouTube every day. So Subscribe there. Make sure you hit the bell so you know when the new stuff comes up. All right. Photo Joseph. Thank you, man. Uh, I'm looking forward Thank to you. having a conversation with you after you get. What are you ordering? Like 12 of those box cameras? Is that what the. <laughs> <laughs> if this um, if this project, this is a live streaming project comes up, I'm going to have to talk to Panasonic and see if about getting a bunch of these because it really would be the perfect camera for this use to be able to run the SDI runs. Right. Because that you need long. You need SDI for long run. Um, HDMI is quite limited in length. I don't want to go wireless because of the distance walls between potential interference. I want solid, reliable connection. So that's SDI. There's, there's no question of that. So either I have to go uh, SDI to HDMI converters or use a camera that has SDI, prefer to use a camera that has SDI. Then if I want mm -hmm. camera control, well, that's what this does, right? So I can see what every camera sees and change it. It's not just seeing it. Like I can see it through the switcher, but to be able to change it, oh, look over in the band room, the, somebody got fancy with the lights and turned up the light on the guitarist. Now I've got to dial the exposure down to compensate for that. Mm -hmm. You know, I can do that instead of going ah, and running to the other room to like try and change it and then running back because nobody's at the switcher to switch it. You yeah. know, it'd be different if I had a, a room full of camera operators, but I'm not going to, right? So, yeah. yeah. Or a yeah, voice activated cool. light stand or something where you can send over there to make changes. <laughs> always yeah. the way. Oh, yeah, so much stuff. That's why this industry is so cool, man. There's like stuff is always changing, always evolving. You know, it, it, it one one release like this can change your whole loadout of what you're doing for a particular gig where you needed all this yeah. stuff. Now you only need this thing. And, you know, it's yeah. all good. Yep. Well, cool. All there right. You Photo Joseph, you have yourself a good weekend. You stay safe up there. You're somewhere in the Oregon area, right? So safe that's, up there. That's where I are. Yep. You be good up there and we'll be in touch. You and I are hanging out next week. We are doing two panels together at the NAB Pulse Production World. 
thingy where I get to pick your brain on internet stuff and creativity stuff. So that should be good. That's right. And I'm actually doing a session on Wednesday on HDR workflow and delivery for YouTube. Oh, I need to catch that. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. really need to catch that. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, man. Well, thanks. Thanks for letting me bend your ear on this. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk to you next week. Anytime. Take care, my friend. Bye bye. This is Twitter.